What is up? I am Jake, and this is Totally Flow. I am so stoked to be sharing this episode with you guys. I just recorded the most fun, rad, inspiring conversation with a creator called Bray Hunzinger. Uh, he is a film photographer, filmmaker, and just a adventurer at large. Uh, we had such a fun conversation talking about film photography, um, the plight of being a creator, and just so much more. So without further ado, I'm going to toss this off to past Jake. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Here we go. Welcome back to the show. For those of you watching or listening, you are here with me now in this space. We're floating in the current of life and we're on the search for inspiration. And today we're blessed to be in the company of a creator who truly inspires me, a film photographer, filmmaker, adventurer, Mr. Bray Hunzinger. How are you, Bray? Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, man. Good to be here. Yes, dude. So, for those of you, th or for those that aren't familiar with your channel or your creativity in general, how do you um, identify as a creator? Like, what space do you explain yourself through or as? I use video to tell stories about photography, and then kind of use photography to get myself into those stories. So it's a kind of this weird avenue that I've taken. But uh, three years ago, really kind of re-fell in love with photography. Um, and I'd always been doing YouTube. Just making videos at all the, all, t all times about different subjects? Yeah, I mean, it goes back to like 2013. I kind of picked up video camera and I just liked doing it, but I had no direction I didn't really know what I wanted to do with it three years ago got into film photography and nothing kind of grasped me grasped me like that before and I I knew I wanted to explore that avenue and not give up video so fused the two together and now I make videos about film photography primarily based in the Pacific Northwest so exploring uh, you know the landscapes that we have up here I'm mostly a landscape photographer so I love hiking being outside and uh, exploring the wonderful areas that are up here in Washington state yes man it's I feel like your love for all three of those hobbies really comes through to the audience like mm -hmm. I am you know honestly like a fan like a member of your community and yeah. I'm somebody who loves filmmaking I love film photography as well and I mm -hmm. love being outside so yep. when I came across your channel, it was like the perfect brew of, you know, <laughs> oh, that I enjoy. So each episode of the show, we like to start off with a segment that I like to call Big Ups. Big ups. So right. big ups to you, Bray. Uh, the reason why I wanted you on the show is because you're somebody who inspires me, like I've said. Um, and the reason why is because I think that I love the parts of your content because it's adventure meets stillness because mm. when you're out and you're shooting yeah. in nature, you're like on a quest. And as the viewer, I feel like I'm on the quest with you. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm, I'm chilling on my couch, drinking coffee while you're like climbing rocks and setting up your camera yeah. and everything. Yeah. And in the midst of that adventure, you also are able to capture moments of stillness through your stills, through the images mm -hmm. that you're creating. Yeah. And it's, it's those moments where you like stop, breathe snap the picture that it like mm -hmm. inspires me to be still in my own life to take photos of the things that you know are in my own world so yeah. that's why i say big ups to you thanks for coming on the show that's what it's all yeah, about thank you thank yeah. you man that's the goal yeah i'm glad that it resonates with you that's kind of the the feeling i want people to experience when watching uh that kind of blissful peacefulness um because the outdoors and nature has provided that to me and I want to be able to share that with as many people as possible because it's indescribably beneficial. Um, yes. If, if you haven't experienced it, man, you, you gotta just, even, even if there's just a park or something near your house, just getting out in some trees, getting out in the grass and, and seeing some greenery, it, it can really reset. It's so you. nourishing. It is. You feel kind of fulfilled afterwards. So uh, if I can provide that experience vicariously to anybody watching, that's, I think I've done my job. 
Yes, dude. I love that. Well, uh, I forgot to tell you, but we're actually submerged in water right now and we're floating in the current of life. We're, uh, we're on the search for inspiration. So I was wondering, uh, what's inspiring you today in this now moment? What's it like the front of mind that's piquing your interest inspiration wise? I think I'm just, I'm up here in Washington. The change of weather is, is just, it's re-energizing me. Uh, we, we just had our winter up here, which for those that know is no, uh, cakewalk as far as, uh, getting out, getting motivated, getting outside. Um, gloomy days. Yeah. A lot of gloomy, cloudy days and rain and, uh, it never really affected me as a child, I think, but over the past few years, I definitely have found myself in those thick ruts in the winter time, um, just because it's hard to pick up a camera and get outside when it's rainy and cold, and you know that motivation kind of goes out the window. So recently, just having some sixty degree days, seeing the sun again, and kind of feeling that spring air. Uh, yes. Every time you walk out the door, giving you a little spring in your step too. Yeah, look at that. That's pretty. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that's just like really something that I'm looking forward to is change of weather, being able to get outside more, do what I like to do, and it's definitely been a huge. Uh, it's been very positive for my mental and physical and just feeling motivated to you know get in shape get ready yes. for hiking season and stuff and it's also just I can feel that excitement to go out and shoot photos again which for the past three months it was definitely uh, that tank was empty so to feel like oh I, I want to go out and shoot pictures I want to get outside and meet up with friends and just go do things instead of being lazy and not wanting to do things that's yes that's a uh, huge for me. So yeah, before, before I reached out to you, the last one of your videos I was watching was one of your more recent ones about like your experience of, you know, burnout or yeah. the lack of inspiration, the lack of creativity, mm -hmm. especially when exterior circumstances are impacting you. Like gloomy weather yeah. is making you want to just sit inside, be cozy and like watch Netflix and yeah. not go on an adventure and take your camera and like haul all of this heavy right. camera equipment. Yeah. So I definitely resonated with that because um, I think all creators feel that way when it comes to yeah. flow. Like yeah. some days it's flowing and it just feels like you woke up on the right side of the bed and you could go do anything and the ideas are coming to you and you feel so creative. And mm -hmm. then some days you just feel so out of flow and so just like st like stagnant, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think kind of have a lot to say on this issue or this con this uh, topic because this year it definitely hit me harder than I think other years and that might be because this winter was kind of the first one where uh, it was very much uh, a main source of like income for me is making these videos mm -hmm. um, the past year I've transitioned into kind of having YouTube and everything that I do with photography be a main source of my income and so to feel that pressure of I have to put something out, I have to go do something. It's a very uncomfortable position to be in when that motivation isn't there. So first of all, I think the scariest thing people experience or the scariest thing people feel when they kind of experience those ruts is this fire that I used to have is never going to come back or this motivation mm -hmm. that I once had to take pictures, go out and shoot video or whatever it may be, it's never going to come back. And that that's something that I was feeling for a little bit, pretty heavily for the first time a couple of months ago. And talking to different people about that issue, some say, dude, you just got to go out and you got to, you got to push through, you got to go out and film, you got to go out and take pictures. And I don't necessarily agree with that. I think that can actually kind of ca cause more harm than it can good sometimes other times maybe it is good to you know just kind of pick up a camera go walk around and see what see what happens and maybe that spark kind of engages again but yes um i've found that during those ruts if you have the opportunity to you know just utilize the time to do something else utilize the time to explore 
other mediums of art, if you're into photography, use that time to explore and and um, kind of engage with, you know, painting or yes. music or film, like actual film, short films. Uh, go watch movies. Try to look at them in a different way. Try to engage with them a little bit more. Um, so I've that that's something that some people were talking to me about. And I really like that idea. You know, if you're kind of in a rut with your own lane, try to venture out and not maybe create in those other lanes, but actually consume. Like be a sponge. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I, I so resonate with all of what you're saying because I feel that way all the time. And if you watch or, you know, any motivational YouTube video or like life, you know, I, I can't even think mm-hmm. of the genre, but they're like, just keep working through it. And eventually yeah. the ideas will come. And I am so yeah. in your boat where I resonate with more taking pause, being still yeah. and it, yeah. just moving your attention to something else. Like I love thrift shopping and on yeah. days where I feel no creativity, I love to just go walk around a thrift store because there's yeah. so much like random stuff yeah. that even if I don't, if I'm not going to create something with the stuff I find, it at least opens new doors in my mind to think, mm-hmm. oh, I've never even, you know, seen this yeah. color combination together. I've never seen, this is a funky pair of pants. I wonder who like wore these before, you know? Yeah. And then just, all that stuff that you just mentioned in a weird way might have, might, might create some inspiration for something that, you know, you want to do with photography. And it's like exploring those other mediums that you can kind of find ways to bring them back into what you do and uh, can provide completely new inspiration. So that's that's why I highly recommend just, as you said, kind of take a breath. Don't, you know, it's a big societal issue Chill. I feel like these days is, is just like, go, go, go. I'll sleep when I'm dead mentality. And uh, I bought into that for a really long time, you know, when in my early 20s and late teens, I was like, so about that. I was like, yeah, just fucking go all day, every day and don't stop until you get to. But it is so unsustainable to do that for most people and a very unhealthy lifestyle to live. So, um, you know, be it what you want. But I, I have found myself to particularly not enjoy that mentality and I find myself more discouraged and more stressed, anxious whenever I try to pursue that lifestyle of I'm just going to go, I'm going to push through, I'm going to keep going, 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 and I'll sleep when I'm dead kind of. Yeah. That kind of, it's so unhealthy and toxic in my opinion and, you know, my, take my opinion with a grain of salt, but just having those, uh, just being okay with not making things not pursuing what you are passionate about for a little while that's like totally okay it's part of the process everybody goes through it not everybody shares that they go through it because yeah i don't think they want to let true. that side of them out but man it's okay to do that and it's just you know go see a movie go <laughs> walk through a thrift store just exactly. take that time to reset refuel and i think it'll pay dividends in the future and I, I think it's there's no coincidence that your commitment to that stillness and like your creative process, like when you're shooting on film versus shooting on digital, it's like that stillness is also a part of that process. For sure. You know? Yeah. To like shoot on film is to be more sacred in that moment, yeah. to like mm-hmm. create the one composition that you want to get one or two frames of and then move on. Yeah. It's like yeah, a totally th- different mindset than digital or I don't know, video or any of that kind of stuff. It is. It film is a good kind of representation of, or switching to film for me is a good representation of just kind of the traject the the way that I lived my life from my early teens until I was like twenty three, and then from twenty three till now, uh, my early teens to twenty three, it was so kind of as I said, it was so much of just going full speed. I was snowboarding, cliff jumping, just being reckless with my friends. I thought I wanted to do this, you know, vlog a day, Casey Neistat kind of Oh my God, thing. me too. That's That was like my you first know? Casey. Casey was my intro and I was like, yeah. I got to have this crazy life full of all this yeah. crazy stuff. Never Same. stop. I wanted to be on a plane like every week and make it seem like I'm some 
traveler that's going to all these exotic places and doing all these cool things and making these deals. And that was like, I bought into that so hard um, up until I was like 22, 23 years old. And then it was literally, I mean, it's, it's weird how it worked, but right when I switched or got introduced to film, everything changed. I mean, wow. Is for, like creatively, I slowed down photography and video wise, I slowed down, but also in my life, I just, I slowed down. I, I took opportunities to just, as you said, be a sponge, it, it consume things, soak things up, feel things that I haven't felt before. And all that came from just kind of being comfortable in my own shoes. I think all that garbage before was me trying to be somebody that I'm not. Um, and there's certain principles that I had before that I think are, are good. You know, it's good to have a good work ethic and all that stuff. But, um, man, I just enjoy, I just enjoy those calm moments. Now I, I enjoy being out at an Alpine Lake and just taking it all in and, and, you know, just letting, uh, letting the video and the photos kind of speak for themselves as opposed to before I felt like I was always speaking for the photos, speaking for the videos and trying to make them seem a little bit more profound than they actually are. Yeah, it's like in the process of embracing that creative flow of like when you pick up the film camera, that's your new, that's your new tool. It's Mm -hmm. you're also embracing that natural flow of you going on these nature quests. Yeah. And like sitting at that alpine lake and watching that bird like fly down and grab the fish you know yeah Yeah. i i I found that before i got into film i was i was very much into video like from 15 to 22 it was pretty much video that i was interested in i thought that's the real pathway i wanted to pursue and it still very much is to an extent but um those videos that I made from 15 to 22 and part of this is just because I was young and still figuring myself out and maturing you know but m- those mm-hmm. videos they had zero substance I mean they there was a couple that I made that were like pretty decent storytelling but for the most part nine out of ten videos I put out had no substance no story no meaning people didn't really feel anything from watching them they weren't able to take anything away that I felt was positive after they watched one of my videos it was all b-roll i wanted to make, make like myself vibey like, edits vibey and all the you know <laughs> transitions the zoom and the all those transitions <laughs> key frames and like key framing and keyframe <laughs> interpolation just cranking it all the way and like so I, you know it was it was very much just surface level um content that i was putting out and i've found that through film photography it's allowed me to weave intricate stories into my videos and that feels a million times better than just putting out some crazy video with all these fancy edits that people watch and maybe they get entertained for a minute. But other than that, there's no real impact. Yeah, I think the uh, like when I watch your videos, there, there's so much tripod work, obviously, because you're a one man mm-hmm. show. So you like set yeah. up your camera and then you go and take the photo. And it's kind of like old school cinema when things were slower Things were yeah. like everything was on a tripod and nowadays so much stuff is handheld. Every YouTube video you watch is handheld. Mm-hmm. So I admire like that use of the tripod because yeah. it, also, it also like that stillness communicates or is communicated to the audience, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's the tri- the. Tri- it's I, I just a- imagine you trekking with like your mega tripod <laughs> and then your like Pentax or whatever you're carrying, yeah. like two hands. It's a pretty ridiculous set up it doesn't like i yeah i try to justify it but like in reality i probably don't need to be carrying as much stuff as i do up on those (laughs) hikes and whatnot but it's it's like i'm just a nerd for the video quality stuff and i like i love shooting on the black magic and shooting on raw and the color science and so to me now that i've experienced it it's really hard for me to go the other way and it's like i want my even if it doesn't really matter to the audience you know the story's there either way but i for my own sake, for my own fulfillment, I just like when my stuff kind of feels like a, a little bit of a movie, you know, like something for you sure. might kind of see in the theater. So um, that's just fun for me. And when I go back and watch, you know, two, three, five, ten years down the road, 
to like have that kind of quality it'll it'll be something that i can kind of laugh about and and get excited over so yeah and you'll probably remember like oh gosh that shot is so cinematic and beautiful but yeah. it also took me 15 minutes exactly. to set it up and put the nd filter on yeah. and get everything perfectly exposed and stuff yeah yeah the the tripod work is very fun it's challenging at the same time i also kind of battle with am i you know am i working a little bit too hard at something that i could achieve with maybe half as much time put into it you know if i just you know give somebody some money to come out with me for a day and film me um you know it's it (laughs) might end up saving like four hours while i'm out there but um yeah you know i think it's just fun for me and and i've always found that being by myself um and this is very much a person to person kind of situation but for me being by myself is always where where i feel the most comfortable because i very much care about how other people are feeling when i'm around other people like if mm. you come over to my house i'm going to make sure that hey can i get you anything to drink you want me to you hungry let's grill up some burgers like you light you a candle anything? make everything yeah, feel yeah, like, nice I, I want people to feel good when i'm around them and when i get any sort of slight feeling that somebody is uncomfortable or doing something they don't want to be doing when they're with me that affects me really heavily unfortunately and so when I'm like even out with my girlfriend who is immensely supportive of everything that I do a photographer herself and she's filming me and she's like this is so heavy I'm like okay put it down we're done I'll put it on the tripod (laughs) just like go enjoy yourself you know so it's like very hard for me to bring somebody else along because I just am like, I can't think about what I'm actually doing and making. I'm so much about like, Hey man, are you good? Like, is this okay that we're doing this right now? Do you mind yeah. if I pull the car over real quick? Cause this pick, you know, I, I get very, uh, I censor myself a little and bit. And that little bit of energy that, that you're exerting in those moments takes away from, you know, if you're, if you're in your solitude, mm-hmm. you're able to do everything you want to do. Yeah. I, I, I feel the same way I've experienced that making videos like with just myself versus having friends come and help me. There's a part of me that is so consumed in being conscientious of how everybody's experiencing yeah, the moment right. versus yeah. if I'm by myself, I'm going to be there like way longer than I Yeah, than. exactly. Yep. So when I'm by myself, it's like completely clear headed. I can just focus on what I want to make. I, you know, I can set up the shots that I want to set up, but on the other end of the blade is you're putting in a lot more effort. And I'm you're sure your arms are probably yourself. so tired once you come home Dude. from those trips. Yeah. I only recently picked up this. It's a super nice, uh, shoulder pad that attaches to the tripod mm. that just is a nice, super nice cushion. Uh, for like hiking and stuff but before that i was just like bare tripod on my shoulder and dude i'm like my bone is probably dented from that it's like <laughs> it's a huge it, like divot yeah I, would, I come home and my but my shoulder would be so erect but i've found things that have kind of alleviated a lot of the hassle that comes with that so that's so so funny um so one of the questions that i wanted to ask you for sure coming into this was First, what's your what's one of your favorite photo it's adventure excursions you've been on? And uh, when you're on these excursions in your videos, I love the parts where you meet strangers. Mm-hmm. Like it seems like sometimes like you had one where you talk to a hotel receptionist or you're on a hike and you meet yeah. somebody at the end of the hike. Yeah. So I wanted to say, what's your favorite hike you've been on and what's your favorite stranger you met on one of those hikes? My favorite hike I'll kind of cheat and split it into two parts. My favorite hike that I've done is probably the Enchantments. Um, it's like the iconic hike up here in Washington, up near Leavenworth. It's like 23 miles and, you know, way up in the Alpine Lakes wilderness. And it's it's just incredibly unique. You get so many different types of wildlife and landscapes and it's like just a tour of everything that's great about Washington all in one hike I mean you get these these rock formations that look like you're on um, 
the the planet from interstellar the last planet that they go to dr man's planet you know it's like it looks like that and then the next second you're down in this like kind of golden rock colorado-esque um valley and you get you're just surrounded by alpine lakes and depending on which season you go you get the larch trees that are you know in bloom in the fall it's beautiful golden trees up there so that just offers a lot for for 23 miles through the alpine lakes wilderness and it's incredibly challenging it's about 12,000 13,000 feet of elevation change Whoa! so by the end of it dude my I was like absolutely fried um but it's very worth it very rewarding so that hike is many people will will say it's cliche but it's truly an incredible experience Mm. um and then is that so you're hiking to a turnaround point or you're hiking to a point where you camp and then hike out the next day so the enchantments is a very popular hike and they started doing a lottery system for backpacking Mm. so if you want to camp up there you have to get a permit and that's done through a lottery system and it's a very 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 low chance that you get the uh, permit to go do that so you can hike through in a day if you'd like to you can't like you can't spend the night without a permit but you can hike the through trail which is 23 miles through so you have two cars you park one at one trailhead you drive the other to the other trailhead. Wow. You hike to the other car and then and then you bring your car back to get the other yeah, car. That's a long day. It's yeah, you started at about four thirty in the morning and then depending on how many stops you take, which we wanted to take in everything. So we hiked to a couple side lakes and stuff, even got a little cliff jump in up there at one of the lakes and nice. we started at like five and ended at five in the morning and ended at around seven PM. So, and so, yeah, it's like a 14 hour kind of <laughs> ordeal, but, uh, it's, it's incredible. And at the end of wanted, that, that, that ice cold beer tastes like 10 times better dude, than any beer you've ever yeah, had. The five ice cold beers. Yeah. They're <laughs> awesome. Um, so that's gotta be my favorite hike. And I kind of divide those experiences between like hikes and backpacking trips because backpacking trips are kind of like their own thing in my mind. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of great camping up here in in Washington, and I think my favorite experience backpacking is is from a place called Rachel Lake, which is um, in the Alpine Lakes Wilderness, kind of out by um, Cleelum, and um, that that hike is like just uh, that experience that I had going up there and backpacking it. It was. Um, very much just a whirlwind of emotion and struggle and then kind of learning from that and then turning it into a positive experience um for whatever reason just on the way up I was really struggling really just having a lot of doubts with photography and Mm. the weather wasn't looking good and you know when you're out there alone you're seven miles out in the middle of nowhere and the the what yeah you know it's I'm not afraid to admit it's it's it can definitely get a little intimidating and scary and so um but you know at the end of the day you're prepared with everything that you need but that just like kind of takes a toll on your mind and so yeah that first night that I was out there was very much like gloomy and just I wasn't feeling that good about anything I didn't really want to shoot any video take any pictures and um but it's this absolutely gorgeous lake and you know I spent the night woke up the next morning and it's like fog kind of rolling off the hill sun's coming out it was just wow. that clarity came over me and I, you know I just had that realization that man this is this is pretty damn good up here like at the end of the day uh I can't complain about being in a place like this and the next morning just I hiked up the the, the ridge line above the lake and got this vantage point that was like one of the most breathtaking views I've ever seen. Wow. And the, on this hike is actually uh, my favorite stranger story, the second question that you asked me. So I, I hike up this ridge and I go above the lake to another set of lakes called Rampart Lakes that are, that are above Rachel Lake. And I'm walking kind of, uh, there's a lot of snow still um, up there because it was uh, July and we had a big snow year last year. So there's a lot of snow up there. So I'm kind of losing the trail a little bit. And uh, I'm just kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And I see this tent 
off uh, in the distance, and somebody's kind of hanging outside of the tent, and I'm wearing like another human. Oh my god! Yeah, because I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. And then, so this like the first person I've seen out there that that day, and uh, I got my Pentax six seven two, big old camera, and I'm walking around, and he kind of says something about my camera, and uh, it turns out he shoots film too he shoots on a contact g1 he's like oh yeah i'm looking to get him a mia 7 because you know i want to bring medium format up here on my backpacking trips and yeah lightweight and and i was like yeah i just had him a mia 7 so we were talking for a little bit and then he's he was like i think i follow you on instagram are you you're bray and i was like dude yeah that's crazy and then he was like i don't i don't know if you've seen my channel i'm film outside and i had fall i literally have followed him i've been wow. following him for like a year and we oh just my gosh. like talk about connect. synchronicity <laughs> so it's like this it was this random meeting of uh we, we had both been following each other's work for a while and just the only human i had seen that morning he's up there alone and and uh camping and yeah so we had talked for a little bit and it was a really cool experience just to like have somebody up there that's not only into backpacking but also into film photography and, gosh that is a yeah what a treasured moment it's like yeah uh, not only are you having this internal like you know struggle within yourself and you find this new day this new moment of like wow actually i'm present i'm in this hike it's beautiful i feel good and then yeah. you're having this other moment it's like meant to be it's like destiny yeah yeah so that yeah exactly that Oops. Uh, that trip was was very cool for me and yeah I think it was like a staple backpacking trip because it was like adverse not really adversity but like adversity that I brought upon myself but then overcome it or overcame it and then uh yeah it's like set me up really nicely for all future backpacking trips so, wow yeah. yeah that's that's amazing when you're doing one of these nature excursions what's the best fuel at the end of it Is it a Capri Sun, an ice-cold Guinness, or a handful of Alpine spring water? Wow. that's Those are three very viable options. When I get done with a big backpacking trip, usually I'm in the Alpine Lakes area, so I go straight to a place, a little place at the summit in, or the Snoqualmie Pass at the summit. Uh, There's like kind of a couple of restaurants i think it's called common commonwealth uh restaurant up there and uh they have an absolutely fire burger and a really good beer selection so i i usually go straight from the alpine lakes wilderness you're just covered in like mud and grime and you're like smell get me a beer and i'm like (laughs) sit down and grab a beer and a burger from there and it's yeah that is like the best meal you'll ever have for sure that's so right. But a Capri Sun works very nicely too. <laughs> so can't can't rule that out either. Hits different. It does. Let's say down the line, your YouTube is booming. You can take months off at a time and you have the funds to create like your dream photo experience. Is there mm-hmm. a photo you have in mind or a photo destination that you would love to go to? I've started to realize that I'm less interested, I think, in photographing beautiful places and more interested in photographing things that I'm very unfamiliar with. So I'd really like to just, you know, inject myself into some situations that are pretty uncomfortable to me, uh, whether that be on uh, solo backpacking trips, you know, through different sections of the PCT for weeks at a time oh, yeah. or traveling to, you know, a culture in Southeast Asia that I'm very unfamiliar with. But the those kinds of experiences, I think, interest me a little bit more now than just trying to find like beautiful locations mm. because truthfully, I'm blessed with some of the most beautiful landscapes in the world right in your backyard, the Northwest. Yeah. So like, I, you know, I could explore this area for a lifetime and I'd still, I still feel like there'd be new stuff to discover every year. So, um, you know, I, the, the Dolomites in Italy are, is a place that I've always wanted to go and, and just for a landscape, um, kind of for, you know, to photograph some incredible landscapes, the Dolomites, the Alps, um, are both places 
that I'd say are at the top of my list. I've been to the Swiss Alps, but haven't really explored them extensively. Um, but yeah, I think I'm more at this stage of my life, at least a little bit more interested in just finding things that make me a little uncomfortable talking to people that I haven't talked to before having conversations that can enlighten me or another person. And then trying to photograph, trying to capture that experience in a photograph. Like people in their element too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm all, I say this all the time, but the most impactful photos that I've taken are not landscapes. They're photographs of other people. People, Yeah. I think, you know, I love photographing landscape landscapes because I love being outside. But when it comes from a photography standpoint, when photography is at the forefront, I think the most amazing and the most intriguing images are usually images that are taken of other people. So yes, I hear you. I, I agree hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. I, I remember or in one of your videos I was watching, um, you, you mentioned like Anthony Bourdain and I, oh, yeah. am, I so agree, or I guess just, I'm very into him and his whole like filmography. He's yeah. filmed like so many episodes over his mm-hmm. life and yep. his quest to kind of explore new places, new people and demystify the things that we don't understand when it comes to food. Yeah. I can yeah. so see you in those types of environments, like, you know, especially with your channel because it's just yeah. ever changing going yeah. there, talking to people, doing portraits. Mm-hmm. That'd be so cool. Yeah, man. I'm glad you brought him up because he's truthfully larger than any photographer or videographer in my life inspirationally he has been probably the the biggest figure that has gotten me to the point that I'm at now with what I want to do with photography and Mm -hmm. what I want to do with my video I think he just had an incredibly good head on his shoulders as far as the way he saw the world and I try to implement a lot of his morals and ethics and his motivation in my own life because he saw the world in a really really incredible way and he wanted to do his best to share those stories with other people and enlighten other people. And I think that's something that I very much want to do. And in the past two years, I think that I've realized that that's really the main thing in life that I want to try to conquer mm-hmm. is, is uh, sharing those stories with other people through the medium of photography and video. I definitely feel like his voice like his unapologetic self yeah i feel like i see some of that in your videos like if you're having a bummer situation you're gonna share yeah. and yeah. the moments that you're in your bliss you know on the top mm-hmm. of the mountain you f- i can f- you feel like you're in your bliss so yeah i think that raw um vulnerable that vulnerability that you and he both brought to the table bring to the table i can see that so yeah keep doing think- what you're doing <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah, there's, uh, I think filtering and censoring yourself from uh, and deciding not to share those, you know, trials, it's devastating to people because you never know who might need to hear that you're going through it too, you know? Yes, for Fil- sure. This, this filtering world that we live in, it's it's just become devastating to people's mental health and and to people's uh overall perception of the world it's so any chance that i get to share something that i'm struggling with or something that's bugging me i think people need to stop looking at that in the sense that it's somebody being negative but rather somebody that's just being honest because that's life and everybody goes through it at some point or another. So yeah, it's it's less annoying to hear that somebody's struggling and more beneficial to me Definitely. because it's uh, it just is a reiteration that that's part of life and if you go through it expecting those things not to happen, you're going to be in for a wild ride. Definitely. It's like the value of truth is so much more than yeah. um you know, somebody pretending like everything's okay, mm-hmm. like for the sake of entertainment, I'd rather yeah, exactly. have the truth, even if it's right. like exactly. light and fluffy. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on like the popularity of film recently. Mm-hmm. Like obviously it's an old medium 
And yeah. over the last like two years, film has shot up in price because everybody's buying 35 millimeter cameras, whether it yeah. be in thrift stores or at like urban outfitters. So yeah. what do you, how do you envision like the future of film maybe like outside of yourself? Do you think that it's here to stay now? Or do you think that for some, it's like still a fat, it's going to be a fad where it comes and they'll use the cameras for a couple of years and then eventually they'll get cheaper again. Cause they'll, what do you think about that? I think for some people it's definitely a fad. Um, but the resurgence that I've seen, it's pretty substantial. And I think that there's been things happening recently that have kind of, to some extent solidified the fact that film is going to be around for a long time. I mean, we have three new color film stocks just announced like last week or a week before. And then we have, uh, you know, Christopher Nolan and was it Jordan Peele? I think are both working with IMAX to develop a brand new IMAX film camera, which is like, that's huge. For those that don't understand the significance of that, it's pretty damn important because, I mean, this is, you know, I this IMAX is something that was, especially IMAX film, well, particularly IMAX film, that was a dying medium up until Nolan kind of revived it with the Dark Knight series, but, or the Batman trilogy. Um, so the fact that they're in development to make a brand new IMAX film camera that's only going to be accessible to a very limited number of people. That's a pretty substantial move. Um, I think all it'll, I think if we get a consumer brand to create a new film camera, that's going to be an incredible sign of progression as well and longevity. And it doesn't bother me at all that these things are happening. I mean, if you want film to stay alive, this is what needs to happen. Yes. Unless we could perpetually just stay in like 2017 and 18 where there was like still <laughs> some you know last cameras are still cheap still like 10 bucks still, for a dslr still, yeah still cheap and the and the rolls are still cheap but uh you know that i think at that state it's uh it was only a matter of time before it just wasn't sustainable anymore for the businesses that were creating the products and um, I think the only thing that might really hinder the longevity of film right now is uh, if, you know, to what extent people start caring about the environmental impact of it. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to pretend I know a lot about it because truthfully, I don't. But I mean, we live in 2022 and truth be told, there's there's no reason why somebody can't figure out a different process to develop film or create a different film stock that utilizes a different process with more eco-friendly chemicals and stuff like that. So I, I don't think that would be an issue, but I think that's maybe the biggest hurdle moving forward. Yeah. Um, but if it keeps resurging and at the rate that it's at and people keep getting into it at the rate that it's at, and there's that uh, incentive for these major companies to kind of move in a direction of a more eco-friendly processing, um, uh, yeah, more eco-friendly developing process, then they're going to do it. So, you yeah, know, I think it's, I think it's in a, in a, in a really good place. And uh, I hope, I hope that someday, or I wonder <laughs> if someday the price will go down. Like maybe it's like yeah. a bubble where it's going up and up and up and up. And then eventually yeah. people aren't going to pay. Like I went to CVS a couple days ago mm-hmm. to, and I, I just wanted to get like one roll of C41 film for the next day. Like I was going on a, I was hanging out with friends. I didn't have any film and I just wanted to get one roll of like Fuji 200 or Fuji 100 or whatever. Yeah. And it, it was like $25 at, C- yeah. at CVS or something. And yeah. I was like, I, I literally am not buying this right now. I'm going to sacrifice not using my film camera tomorrow because yeah. it's too expensive. Yeah. Um, so I question if someday it'll, the bu- maybe it's like a bubble and it will pop and then eventually it will plateau at like $15 yeah. or I don't know, 10 bucks or definitely could i think that because i had the same thing happen i went to a wog or a rite aid i think and it was 20 bucks for a roll of fuji superior 400 whereas back in the day even back in the day three years ago when i started it was three like 
three seventy five a roll. Yes. I think so. Yeah. It's like six times the price now. Um, but that's at you know that's at Rite Aid. Like I can get a three pack of that exact same film stock at my lab that I go to for mm-hmm. twenty five bucks a three pack. So right, right, right. You know, I think it very much depends on who where you're buying the film and like Kodak's new uh, or the reintroduction of Kodak Gold and medium format. The price point that I've been seeing is like forty five dollars which is very s- comparable to what Portra 400 was at when I started in 2019. Mm. So, I mean, there's new players, there's new options. Could be optimistic, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's new options coming out. And uh, I think that it also, I mean, a little hesitant to say this, but I think it also, it just, when the film prices go up, it just, makes it a little bit more special i know it's Mm. like hard to say that because when people are so in love with shooting film and then the price you know the prices go up it's like oh it's becoming harder and harder to enjoy what i want to enjoy especially for people that are doing it consistently uh but at the same time it's like this is it's a special medium it's something that has a lot of weight to it and um I definitely feel that way when it comes to like Super 8 and 16 millimeter because yeah. nowadays on Instagram, like every Nike ad is like a, yeah. a Super 8 on Super 8. And I'm right. like, wait, 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 why? Like, yeah, what, what the becoming... heck is going on? And now to shoot like two minutes of Super 8 is like a hundred bucks. And it's such a bummer because I yeah. love using my camera, but I'm not going to spend a hundred bucks for two minutes. Yeah. But it definitely does make it more sacred. If I wanted to shoot a little short film on 16 millimeter, it's going to be expensive and I'm going to hold those, those minutes very sacred as I'm like holding my camera. Like this has got to be perfect. One take, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I look at it like, you know, if you went, if you go to Disneyland every single day, how special is Disneyland after a year? It's mm. not that special, at least for me. I mean, maybe some people are just so obsessed with Disneyland that they would never get tired of it. But for me, it's like, okay, I'm like... I go once every four I, years, probably. <laughs> yeah, you know, like if I went, if I was going all the time, it suddenly that kind of magical aspect of it kind of dissipates. So I look at it, I look at film in that same way. Like if film was super, super, super affordable... And like comparable to digital in the in the financial sphere, I mean, I'd be shooting my little thirty five like every single opportunity I have, you know. And it's like, do I really want to be doing that? Like, for me, I I like having that kind of limited aspect to it. I like the fact that okay, I'm going out and shooting a roll of film. Like this me is thirty six exposures occasion. max. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is a kind of a special occasion for me. This is like something that's just not like every day, like, you know, kind of here I go out with my film camera and I'm in a blast like I would on digital. It's that I, I, for me, it just, it has that weight to it. And like you said, particularly super eight and 16 mil, that's like a really special occasion thing for me. Like it's like maybe there's two or three times a year where I'm doing something that Mm -hmm. warrants me bringing my 16 millimeter camera out for fun. You know, I shoot weddings on it, but that's different because the client's paying for the film. Right, right, right. If I'm going to, if I'm going to shell out and I'm going to shoot and mail in the film and, you know, go through that whole process, it's going to be something that's special and worth doing that on. So, yes. Yeah. And, uh, I guess that kind of leads into my last question I want to ask you, because I feel like shooting those 16 millimeter or super eight, at the end of the day, I kind of feel like I'm shooting it just for myself because yeah. even if there was no YouTube to share it or no Instagram mm-hmm. to share it, I love the feeling of shooting it, sending it off, getting it. And when I open my email and I'm watching like the MP4 file for the first time, it, it's yeah. like Nirvana, you know, yeah, to see the is. all those frames come to life. Yeah. So last question I want to ask you, is there any part of your creativity that you um just create for yourself like youtube is connected to your community film photos some of them connected to instagram like is there any creative uh expression that you choose any hobby that you do 
that at the end of the day is just for you. Nobody's eyes sees it. Nobody's experiencing it except for you, Bray. It's painful to say, but I don't think so at the moment. Like everything that I shoot pretty much gets shared in some capacity or another. Uh, it's, you know, I, I shoot the occasional roll of 35 millimeter, I guess, that is just like out with friends and I don't share them anywhere. You know, me and my girlfriend look at them and it pretty much only comes in contact with our eyes and our eyes only. Yes. But uh, otherwise, and part of it's because of the nature of film and as we were just talking about the price of film, like if I'm going to shoot a roll of film, you know, it, it, it's just, it just makes sense for me to, well, it becomes a business expense a, for you, I'm sure. So that makes it, sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, exactly. But it just, it makes sense for me to, to make a video about that because it's like, it's killing two birds with one stone, whether or not I share an image for me personally, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't somehow stain it. It doesn't somehow uh, make it less, you know, impactful to me. Mm -hmm. It's still an incredible memory that I would have captured either way. So to share, it's just, you know, an opportunity for me to further express what I love to make. And, and hopefully other people can get some sort of fulfillment or, uh, yeah, you know, I hear you. Like at the end of the uh, day, out of it. it these you're the things you do, filmmaking, adventuring, film photography, like they are vessels for your creative uh expression. So to share yeah. is to express that. Right. Yeah, and to, especially it, to have a community, everything you're sharing is like expanding that community a little bit wider, right? Yeah. Yeah. I you know, it this is this is something that I've I've thought about before and I've gone back and forth on, you know, are you are you a true artist if if everything that you're making is just for sharing or do you have to have something that is just for you is that what makes you a true purebred kind of artist who's really in it for the love of that art form i don't know and maybe at some point i'll come to understand that but right now i'm still very much in my exploring stage you know i've only been shooting film for three years now and um i'm very i'm very much new to this medium and and still kind of understanding the the true weight and impact that it has on me in my life so yeah right now i i i shoot the occasional roll of 35 as i said that that you know I, i'll only look at or my girlfriend will only look at and then uh in the hall during the holiday season i I shoot a roll of 16 millimeter, eight mil, super eight millimeter film that is just my family and stuff around the holidays and keep keep on for Christmas the memories. morning, yeah, and you know, and yeah, I shot a roll of 16 this past Christmas um, that you know maybe I'll share next Christmas or something, but you know for now that's just between my family and I. So mm -hmm. there's there's certain little things, but for the most part, man, I just you know I. I I'm not going to lie and say that I don't very much enjoy sharing my stuff, getting feedback from other people, you know, seeing just as everybody does enjoy it. Yeah. It's, it's like, you're just lying. If, if you're saying that that doesn't impact you in some way or another, it's, it's just, it feels good when, when somebody takes a moment to comment and say, man, this is, this is awesome. Thanks for sharing this. Like for sure. it's, it's, I don't, it's just all mostly positive in that in my eyes i don't see a lot of negative from i i agree from sharing man. your art so ha yeah have you ever this just popped into my mind but have you ever seen a uh, secret life of walter mitty oh dude it's one of and, my favorite probably top three movies yeah me too me. it's gotta be Incredible. and at the end sean penn is like a film photographer and he's like shooting the uh what is it like the snow leopard, snow leopard yeah and he's there he's got his set up he's like on this quest and he like yeah sees it experiences it and doesn't take the photo yeah and it, it feels like i don't know in some way what you're creating you know maybe you 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 do take the photo but you're also on these nature adventures you're also in that moment to even curate the adventure alone 
is to create, you know, you're creating these nature excursions, you're going out and you get to experience every moment in between you press record. So maybe those are the moments that is, I think, you know, creativity. I think that's a better way to look at it in my, in my life is I, I'm not necessarily pressing the shutter button in, uh, with intent for it to just be for myself but there's a lot of moments where I'm out doing my thing and I'm at an alpine lake and you know or, or on a hike and I just I decide not to bring my camera I decide mm-hmm. not to load up another roll of film and it's just because I want to be in that moment and I want to experience this, experience that just that aspect of life without yes. the distraction so I very much understand that kind of uh, reasoning you know like that that scene with sean penn i understand that but for me if i'm going to take a picture of something you know if i am going to press the shutter i don't see any difference in whether or not i decide to share that or keep that for myself yes but, i hear you yeah yep wow man well bray thank you so much for coming on the show you're an absolute legend I've loved talking to you and I feel boosted with stoke and inspiration after this. <laughs> I'm going to go like run a I'm mile and hear. bring my film camera and get in some Let's nature go. today. I love that. What do you shoot on? I have a Olympus OM2 oh, that yeah. I've been shooting on nice. since like 2015. Really? Um, wow. You've been into it longer than I have. Well, I, I just like got it from my aunt and I, I was like uh-huh. a slow progression. Like I would shoot like yeah. one roll over the course of like three months. Yeah. And then since then... Um, I love buying cameras on shopgoodwill.com. Like I never invest. I didn't even know that was a thing. Oh my gosh. I'm about to change your life. Did you just blow my mind? You, you go on shopgoodwill.com and Uh there's any film camera you can think of for like pennies on the dollar. Like, oh my gosh. I, I love getting like crappy underwater cameras because I live right by the ocean Uh and I'll just buy a camera, go shoot and yeah. So I have, that's sweet. I have a little like Super 8 that's like a Kmart brand Super 8. Yeah. I have a six, 16 millimeter that is a, um, it's like a Bell and Howell from oh, yeah, like yeah. the 1940s or something. So Yeah. That's sick. Yeah. Dang. It's always changing. Well, that's but awesome. I love it. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. I didn't even know <laughs> that was a, that was a thing. So that's pretty crazy. Yeah, man. Well, but thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate you. Big love. Big Thank ups. You, man. Hope to, Thank uh, you, dude. let's hang soon. Next time you're in yeah, California, man. let's go let's go hit a lake. I'd love to. Yeah. Hit me up when you're in the Northwest if, All right, man. if you are. Will. Cheers. All right. Love it, dude. Later. Thank you. Peace. See you, dude. That was my conversation with Bray Hunzinger, a truly inspiring creator. Oh my gosh. I feel so boosted with inspiration. Uh, I'm literally going to go on a hike right now. Get some nature. Get some vitamin D. Um, Thank you, Bray, for coming on the show. You're an absolute legend. Looking forward to talking to you about my inspirations of the week next week. And I just want to say thank you to all of you who are either watching or listening. Thank you so much for devoting your time to be here with me, to listen, to feel, to absorb all of this inspiration we're talking about. Uh, I love this show. I love Totally Flow. And I love you, the audience. Thank you. Love you. Bless you. See you soon.